Not so long ago, we received a shipment of Blackmagic 3G SDI Arduino shields, which is probably the most awesome Arduino shield in the world. It's um, an FPGA that takes SDI in, spits it out to control Blackmagic cameras, like the Blackmagic Micro Studio camera or the Mini uh, Ursa Mini camera or the regular bigger studio cameras with the screen on the back. And uh, Blackmagic even I mean, it's really unusual that they supply you a piece of a printed circuit board, but they did this time. And uh, they even supplied schematics for a shield you can build on top of your Arduino shield. So if you look at this little sandwich I have here, just come closer, please. You see the Arduino shield is sandwiched between an Arduino Uno and the joystick shield from Blackmagic, which in this case we have uh, produced as a real uh, double-sided um, PCB with buttons, resistors, small joystick, and so forth. So the way this thing works is you supply it with a 12 volt from uh, like a Blackmagic power supply. This is the output and this cable goes to the SDI in on the camera. The SDI out from the camera is shown in this monitor so we can see the result. And uh, I have loaded a so-called sketch, which is the software you program into Arduinos, onto the Arduino, which has the microprocessor. And that will um, interpret values from the joystick and the buttons into commands sent to the camera. So as I move the joystick, you will see on the screen something is happening. You can see I'm, I'm turning the iris down and now I move it up and the iris is turned up. So Blackmagic, and this is Blackmagic software for the shield, they implemented it in a way so you basically provide a speed command to change the iris value. And likewise, if you go to the sides, you are adjusting master black. Then they also put three buttons. You see, um, if I press this button, it will try to autofocus. I don't know if my camera or my lens, but it just goes out of focus, but uh, point taken. If I press uh, this one, it will cycle through different color combinations on the camera. And then the last button is, uh, what was it? Oh, it was the tally light on the camera. So you can see you can actually manipulate the tally lamp on uh, the, the studio camera. So that's the Blackmagic Shield. And we have decided to uh, make a bunch of these PCBs. So you can see we have some here. We, have, uh, we are going to pack them up with buttons so you can buy a small kit and uh, not have to worry about PCB fabrication yourself, but just um, get it from us. And then you find your soldering iron and um, have fun with the Blackmagic Arduino shield. But on top of that, we also made a, another shield, uh, our own design. Not that it's extremely fancy or anything, but it does things slightly different from Blackmagic's. It has a, um, a fader, which stays in position, so it's not a joystick. Basically, this will be the iris fader, and this will be, be like your master black knob. And then we also put uh, three buttons and some LEDs. So you can get these two in a kit from us uh, with software. So let's try to uh, see how this shield could work. And um, first, when you change the shield of an Arduino, uh, you disconnect the power. That's like rule number one. So this power cord, but also the USB power cord. And then, uh, let me see. Uh, you see if you can get the old shield off without bending the legs of the shield, the pins. And then you put the new shield on. So uh, it needs to fit into these sockets all the way around like that. And then we press it into position. Okay, so I apply the USB power and we can also apply power to the Blackmagic Arduino shield right there. And then over in the Arduino environment on your laptop, you load the sketch. So what you see here is I have the custom joystick shield sketch, which is the one I just demonstrated with the other PCB. And here we have the Scarhoy fader board. And uh, this is one you can download from our GitHub website, or GitHub uh, repository. Uh, sorry, uh, I have no business there. What I need uh, to program an Arduino, this is just really quickly. I, of course, you need to select the particular type of Arduino and also 
the serial port to which it's connected. Um, and then you just press the upload button. So it's compiling the sketch and then it's going to upload it right there and we're done. So let's see what the result of this is. And as I pull the slider here, you will see on the screen how the iris goes up and down on the camera. And as I turn this knob, I'm adjusting the master black. Okay, so in the sketch we made, we gave an example of how you can use the buttons to activate adjustment of red, green and blue. So now I activated red and you see that I'm adjusting red values, green values, blue values. And if I press again, I go back to master black. So we are not providing anything, but just like um, also a shield with a test example, but one from which you can better imagine, I would say, to create a small CCU control for your Blackmagic camera. So we have worked with the shield um, and discovered quite a number of things. First of all, we have decided to make a small adjustment on how the um, library Blackmagic wrote for the Arduino shield uh, uses the constructor. Um, it's um, generally bad practice to pass a, um, any parameter in the constructor. Uh, it makes it difficult to integrate in other libraries, so we have changed that. Um, we also found that their shield, um, let's just take it out here so we can take a closer look at it. We also found that um, it's not compatible with every Arduino board on the market out of the box. Uh, for instance, with an Arduino Uno, you know, it works, but it communicates the I squared C information over pin A5 and A4 which is not really a good idea if you work with uh, different Arduinos, which generally has it uh, pulled up on uh, these two pins. I think it worked on the Ethernet actually out of the box, so there we, we should be good. But if you go to something which is more like a variant over the uh, Arduino uh, Mega, uh, this is an Arduino Mega, this is a copy from Seed Studio. Uh, we also like a lot to use uh, stuff like the Ether Mega, which has an Ethernet connection. And here the um, I squared C pins are on pin 20 and 21. But on all these boards, they uh, commonly place the I squared C on these two pins. So shields could potentially be compliant with all of these different Arduino types. Blackmagic shield is not. So those two pins you see here, although Blackmagic are aware that they are assigned to I squared C, there seems to be no way to actually utilize them. They seem to be unconnected. So uh, on our shield, we have um, uh, integrated a solution for that. So if you use one of these Arduinos, you need to just uh, put a, a little blob of solder on, uh, uh, on two uh, pads to, to solve that problem. So apart from I squared C working only on pin A4 and A5, we also found that the shield itself integrates a 10K pull-up resistor on the I squared C which is um, kind of fine if you want it to work out of the box with uh, the Blackmagic provided shield, but um, it, it's not really the job of the Blackmagic Arduino shield to provide those pull-offs. Well, okay, it's a bit technical, but uh, what was kind of worse is if you want to use it on a 3.3 volt board, you may be in for trouble because we had no way uh, we could really connect it to, uh, say, an Arduino Duo, which is a 3.3 volt device, uh, unless we used a voltage uh, translation uh, chip, um, which is kind of uh, special. You can get it from Adafruit, um, and I can't remember its name. It's like TCA something, but that converter chip, it's really like an I2C switcher chip, and that made it work. Although we also had cases where we could not at all make it work, uh, which was really frustrating after a lot of uh, debugging. We, we're not exactly sure where that problem is since we didn't solve the problem, um, but there, there were some, some, some quirks around the I2C. And um, 
Uh, other than that, you should also know Blackmagic. They suggest that you provide the VN to your project using this uh, plug. That's probably a good idea. Just do that. Um, the voltage from uh, the input here will travel down into the Arduino through the VN pin. Um, we also discovered there is no 5 volt or 3.3 volt on those two pins. They seems to be uh, to be unused by the shield. Uh, the 5 volt Arduino enable jumper we couldn't figure out what that was for, so that's still to be discovered. Another thing about the library they made is that they initialized the wire library. The wire library is the one that communicates over I2C. They do the initialization of that inside their library, which is um, probably also, it could be harmless. It could be harmless, but um, it could also be a problem. Um, for instance, if you use different pins with your wire, if you use different pins with your wire initialization, it might cause you. <sighs> it might cause you trouble. Finally, um, we also discovered that some Arduino environments or whatever it might be necessary to actually include the wire library in your sketch and not rely on uh, actually you couldn't rely on because it wouldn't compile but let me just show you what I mean because we had to modify the custom joystick shield sketch just a tiny bit and this might be a lifesaver for you if you uh, if you're not really into Arduino we had to add a line like this one include wire.h just like before the setup function otherwise we actually couldn't we, we couldn't compile the the, the library or the sketch so that might also be necessary and we're not entirely sure in which cases this applies and in which cases it doesn't but now you know so maybe that made the whole thing work for you so the last thing is and um, that's pretty cool it's possible to also read stuff out from the incoming SDI uh, stream like uh, if you have um, CCU commands coming to to the shield from an ASM switcher or another shield, you can actually read out that information, you can pass it on or you can do other things with it. Uh, and generally it seems to work really well, although it was not um, very well documented, but we figured out how to, to get those uh, data packets out. Although it seems that sometimes packets are, are like missed, um, uh, we're not entirely sure, but um, it was at least something like 90% of the data that we were able to catch um, from uh, the shield.